The question is that the uh, motion be agreed to, and I give the call to the Honourable Liz Bajak. Madam Deputy President, and I am delighted uh, to get up and speak on this motion and support my very good friend and colleague, the Honourable Nick Garan, in what he brings to the House today. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Madam Deputy President, just a moment, I think we might have the students from the Marta Day College um, in the gallery, and I'd like to welcome them into the gallery today. Uh, you come from the North Metro region, where I am a representative, so you are most welcome here today and great to see you uh, enjoying Parliament in action at a time when on Thursday mornings quite often we do have these very good debates um, of a non-partisan nature that we can bring to the House. Uh, when my, my friend and colleague, the Honourable Nick Garan, opened the debate, uh, he did mention that in previous times uh, when he has got up to speak on the issues of International Men's Day and uh, his suggestion that there needs to be a, a minister for men's interests, that he has noticed a shift in the body language of several women um, around the chamber. And I have to say, and I'm going to put it out there today, I have previously been one of those people who may have rolled my eyes at the thought that he was suggesting. However, like all things that my colleague brings to this House, he makes us think about a lot of things in a different way. Um, and one thing the Honourable Nick Grant does is he makes us step outside that box that we tend to put ourselves into and think about it. And today I'm here standing very proudly to say I completely support him um, in his bid to have a Minister for Men's Interest um, in a, any future government of Western Australia. So congratulations, the Honourable Nick Garan. You've got me totally on side uh, for that. So, so there you are. Um, we often talk about things in our lives about getting the balance right in so many things that we do do in our life, the balance between our work life and our home life, eating a balanced diet, um, being able to argue and discuss mat matters in a balanced way. Um, and there's also a notion of ensuring that our children receive influences from people in their lives in a balanced way as well. And that certainly, I think, is one of the things that unfortunately, and through no circumstances of their own, very many children in Western Australia, in Australia and around the world suffer from not having that balance um, in their lives. Um, and so I think it's vitally important, in my opinion, that, that children and boys in particular must not only have a loving and nurturing and positive relationship with their mother, but also they must have a positive, loving and nurturing relationship uh, with preferably their father, if that's, if that's able to happen. It's not always possible, but they definitely need to have that loving and nurturing relationship come to them from another male influence um, in their lives. Um, it's, it's interesting, in, again, in, in, in keeping the theme of getting the balance right, that we celebrated International Men's Day yesterday, and as the Leader of the Opposition pointed out, in conjunction with Movember and together with the Leader of the Opposition, I share her uh, support of those in Movember. We know our Treasurer, um, the Honourable Mike Nahan, actually shaved his moustache off at the beginning of November to start to regrow it. And, and I've said to him, and I hope he reshaves it off again at the end of November, because I actually think he looks better without it. And as for some of our colleagues around the chamber who also uh, very rightly joined Movember, um, I, I think I'll be pleased to see December 1 come around. Uh, because I don't think it's a good look on some of you, but, but there we are. Um, but also in keeping with that theme of balance, today, in fact, is also um, World Children's Day. And it's no mistake that International Men's Day is held before World Children's Day, so that, again, we get that balance of looking at what it is that people need uh, to, to be celebrating. So we match the two, two days together to highlight that importance of ensuring that we can get some healthy, positive relationships developing and develop between men um, and children. Um, and, and again, as the Leader of the Opposition said, the theme for this year's International Men's Day is working together for men and boys. Now, that's not just men and boys working together to, to get best relationships that they can. It's for women to work on that together so that, as humanity together, we must be working to ensure that we have these positive role models 
um, for young boys coming up. We can see that there are some absolutely dreadful things happening on the geopolitical scene across the world, um, and I don't really want to dwell on the negative of that. It suffice to say that it's my opinion that a number of these young men who are engaging in atrocities around the world is because they've lost their moral compasses and they've lost the sense of brotherhood and they've lost the sense of direction in their lives. And I think that's because they have probably not had the influence of a very strong, good male role model in their life. And simply that may be because the person that is the positive or is the male influence in their life didn't have that role model um, in their lives after. So it's really important um, that we get that right now. Um, I'm very lucky in my own personal situation um, with my son that he does have a very loving and nurturing and very personal relationship um, with my husband, his father. Um, I have that a really loving and nurturing relationship with my son, but the relationship that my husband has with my son is different to the one that I have with him, and it's rightly so, because men and women together in marriages bring together the wholeness and the balance that I've been talking about that we need to, to be recognising and to be giving to, um, to our boys in particular, so that they in turn, when they become fathers, can pass on what they've learnt um, during their youth. Now, in order for male role models uh, to be able to do what we want them to do, to provide this positiveness um, to young men, they have to be uh, healthy and well and in a good mental state themselves. And of course, again, as the Leader of the Opposition um, rightly pointed out, we find that uh, men in particular do suffer greatly from suicide um, and depression. And whilst women, as we know, quite often find it easier to discuss their problems and their issues with each other, girlfriends will often go out and have coffee and chat for long hours on the phone and be able to share the problems that they're experiencing in their lives, whether they're uh, physical health problems or mental health problems or relationship problems. But we do know that for some reason it's just not the manly thing to do. And that's the way it's been described in the past. It's not, you know, it's it harden the something up. You know, it's not what it's not what men do. Um, but that's not right. Men should be able to sit down and talk about these problems. And I'm very pleased to see that there is a lot of funding going out into in recognition of these sorts of things. And I know um, our Minister for Mental Health very much has, uh, uh, in the foremost of her mind, more often than not, is men's mental health issues. Um, and, uh, and we know ourselves that our Mental Health Commissioner, Tim Marnie, um, is a fantastic uh, male role model for people who have suffered from depression because we know very openly Tim has spoken um, in the past about his own struggles with depression and I can think of no one better to be heading up the Mental Health Commission than someone like Tim and, and I congratulate him for having the guts uh, that it's taken for him to speak out openly because we know it is difficult for men to do that uh, from time to time. Um, just very uh, quickly, just to put some things on the record here with relation to funding for men's mental health initiatives, um, we know that just in recent times, in February this year, uh, in the re recent men's mental health initiatives funding round, um, there was a $10,000 grant given to the Beverly Community Resource Centre for a one-day event for men to build awareness of depression and suicide in the Beverly community, because we know uh, for our... Uh, our rural colleagues, that if there's, there's some, some specific issues out there in the regions uh, and in rural areas that, that men do experience and they need to be looked after well. The Collie and Harvey Local Drug Action Group held youth camps, uh, one for men and one for women, to provide the opportunity to learn more about suicide prevention and develop resilience and life skills to avoid suicide. Um, and there are other funding grants that have been given uh, in July. The Karingal Council Local Drug Action Group were holding camps um, in relation, again, to raise awareness amongst Aboriginal communities of problems in their, in their communities, again, with drug addiction, alcohol addiction, uh, and also depression and suicide. I think there's an incredibly good uh, website resource uh, under the auspices of Beyond Blue called mantherapy.org.au, um, where, uh, uh, in, a, in a somewhat light-hearted manner, um, men can actually go to that very useful site and see some toolkits there uh, to help them deal with issues. But how do you come out and talk about issues like depression 
um, and suicide. But one of the things that by bringing motions like this to the House that the Honourable Nick Garan has done today is it does give us that opportunity to put it on the record to say that it is important that we have strong male role models for um, our boys and for our girls as well. I know, um, as, as, as uh, other people around this chamber, I had a wonderful relationship with my late father, and I appreciate what he's done in, in being part of me today. Thank you, Honourable Nick Garan.